would have been equal to the magnitude of the Nerf gun. And that's why we saw, okay, it didn't move anywhere. It just kind of fell straight down. Okay. That's what's going on. So what we're going to do today is, is get some practices with, um, we're going to revisit this notion of things adding or netting to zero in the next unit. But what we're going to do today is, is kind of add vectors together, right? And that are acting in different directions, different magnitudes, different directions. And we're going to be able to answer questions. Okay. So, so far we've only considered motion. You guys would have seen on Friday and this is, we talked about this, <coughs> the, <coughs> the gravity questions dealt in the y direction, right? Where we saw the acceleration due to gravity was, we'll call it negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, that was in the y direction. And then in the x direction, we had questions that, um, you know, cars accelerating, but they had different accelerations, right? They might be 1.2 meters per second, right? And that, that's the rate at which the car is accelerating. And we're able to calculate velocities and times and, and heights and distances and all those things. That's what we saw on Friday, right? And I posted the solutions to all those questions, okay? Now today, obviously things don't move directly in like one direction, always, right? Like we live in a three-dimensional world. We're not going to get quite that complicated, but we can definitely handle, I think we have the math skills based on the math that we've taken to deal with questions that behave in the two-dimensional uh, frame, right? So X and Y. <coughs> okay. And so, so far we've only considered motion in one dimension, motion constrained along a single line, traveling north and south along a line, or east and west, or some combination of those two, right? So something like this, this it's fixed along these, these directions, right? And so what we're going to see today, we're going to see the consideration of uh, we're going to be we're going to have objects that travel in two directions now. OK, and we're going to use some some math that you guys have already done uh, in order to uh, tackle those questions. OK, so, for example, Jane drives 100 kilometers west and then 90 kilometers north in two hours. OK, and this question wants us to find. <clears throat> Distance, displacement, speed, and velocity. Now, we know it's fairly easy to calculate distance and speed, right? Because they are just, um, they're scalar quantities, right? So we don't have to worry about the direction. So for distance, we know the total distance traveled for this is the 100 plus 90, right? We don't care about the direction for distance. So we traveled, uh, she traveled 190 kilometers, right, in two hours. So what's the speed over that, or the average speed, I suppose, could be when well, you take the distance and you divide it by the time, right? We know that's the case because when I look at the dimensions of this, for speed, or V, has to have dimensions of distance for some time. Well, what am I going to do? So I'm dividing, right? So I'm going to take the 190 kilometers, and I'm going to divide by the two hours. What do I get? <coughs> you should get the 95. Not writing too well today. Okay. So there's distance and speed. You guys know how to do that. We're not, we're not too worried about the direction, right? That's for um, velocity is a vector, right? And displacement is a vector. And those are a little bit more challenging because we have the magnitude and the direction to consider, okay? But for distance and speed, those are easy, <coughs> okay? So now you got to say, okay, well, what are we talking about? Okay, well, here's Jane's starting point, right here in the corner, okay? And Jane drove, remember, we always kind of make, uh, at least for me, it's not always, but for me, I like to use positive, positive, negative, negative, right? 
So it looks like Jane drove 100 kilometers in the negative direction and then drove 90 kilometers. You can see the vector, right? What I've drawn there is a vector. And then from here to here is also a vector. It's not connecting too well, but <coughs> there you go. So we got the north and we've got the west. And the resultant, okay, what we're going to see here, delta D, or, yeah, you guys can't really read that too well, delta D, that's what it says, the displacement vector is from here to here. That's, that's Jane's displacement, right? Well, how could I possibly figure out what the displacement is? I mean, I mean, you know, I see a triangle on the page, so that should prompt you guys. Right? A special kind of triangle as well. Anybody know? So I know that uh, if I travel in the west direction and then I decide to go north, that, that's perpendicular. Those two directions are perpendicular to one another. Right? Which means that there's a 90 degree down here in the bottom corner. Okay, so we have something at our disposal, right? We can use our friend Pythagorean theorem, right, for right angle triangles. There you go, Elizabeth, there you go. Right, you can use Pythagorean theorem. Right, what does Pythagorean theorem state? It states that when I... Add the squares of the side lengths that has to equal the hypotenuse, right? Well, if I was to do this, <coughs> I'd have to add the, like, this is going to be delta D, and this is uh, the motion in the west direction, and this is the motion in the north direction, right? And so what we need to do is add... 100 squared plus 90 squared. Okay, does anybody have any questions? This is just this is just this is just math with a physics context, right? Just trying to figure out the displacement or delta d. Okay, the vector. Okay, so we're like, okay, well, 100 squared should be 10,000. plus whatever 90 squared is, that's 8,100, right? And then, so we're going to get delta D squared is equal to 18,100. And then to find this, the, remember what we're doing here, to get rid of the squared on the left, we're going to square root. But what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And so you're going to get the square root of, 18,100, and if you guys type that into your calculator, you're going to get the displacement, Jane's displacement is 131.5 kilometers. Does anybody have a problem with what's on the page right now? You can drop it in the chat. If, if you have a problem, I'm not saying there is one. You guys think I'm right? That we're good to go? Oh, did I write it down? Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. I just wrote it down wrong. Oh, speaking of which, as we're, I'll talk about it after. Don't let me forget about Friday's note question, number three. I'll talk about that at the end. <coughs> okay. So, yes, it is 134.5. Okay. Thanks, Jagger. Isn't it negative? Okay, good question. Good question, good question, good question. Elizabeth says what, and I know what Elizabeth's referring to. Isn't it negative? Elizabeth is talking about the fact that in the west direction, yes, she did travel negative 100 kilometers. That's right. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, almost there, Elizabeth. Let me, let me just highlight this because this is going to come up as well. 
right? So if we were to throw in the negative 100 and I square it, negative 100 times negative 100, the negatives are going to cancel. You multiply two negatives together, you're still going to get positive 10,000. Now, Elizabeth has brought up another part to this, right? We found, we found the magnitude of that displacement vector. We found out how big it was, right? But we did not find out whether or not is it pointing in this direction? Is it pointing in this direction? Is it pointing here? Is it here? We have no idea what the direction is of this displacement vector. We have an idea, right? Like Elizabeth saying it's in the northwest direction, right? Which is which is like it's probably true, right? It's it it's acting in this direction somewhere. But we can do much better than just saying northwest, right? We can do much better by finding the exact angle that exists there. Right? You guys know how to do this as well. Right? We had this other uh, nice so katoa. We learned this as well. All right, so it's great. We're, we're able to, yeah, you're right. It's it's acting, the, the displacement vector is acting in the northwest direction. Right? But we can be we can do better than that. Because is it, if Elizabeth, by saying northwest, that's implying that this angle is 45. We don't know that that's the case. It could be 38. It could be 52. It could be anything. So we can find out exactly, exactly what that angle is. Okay, using Sokotoa. All right. Well, here's how I do this. Okay. I would, let's pretend for a second that we made a mistake. Like we, Even like what I did, right? Look, let's say I left the answer as 131.5. That's going to give me a wrong number there if I were to use that piece of information. So what I like to do is I always try and use the information that's provided to me in the question. What are the two things that I know? I know that she travels, was it 90 kilometers <clears throat> north? And I know she traveled 100 kilometers west. Okay. If I were to use, like, you know what this answer is. That's fine. It's 134.5. Right. But who's to say you didn't round that or maybe you get it wrong and then you use it in the second part of this question. This angle is going to be wrong. Right. So let's, let's avoid using it. Right. Let's use the information that they gave us. Well, what did they give us? They gave us this. And they gave us this. <clears throat> so if I'm standing here, right, this is how they label it. If you're standing in, in the corner, theta, and you look at directly across from you, that's opposite because it's opposite of you. And if you're standing at X and you, and you look beside you, another word for adjacent is beside, right? So you're going to look at your Sokotoa and you're going to decide, okay, well, I don't want to use anything with the hypotenuse just in case I got this number wrong, right? So you're like, okay, I'm not using the trig ratios with an H in it. I don't care about hypotenuse, so I'm not going to use this one and I'm not going to use that one. That leaves tangent, right? What does this mean? Well, it spells it out here for you too. Sine, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right, like this, right, that's what that means, and they all do that, right, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent, so tan theta, if we were to write in the number, so we're going to get opposite over adjacent, that's going to equal, well, what are the numbers, we're going to get 90 over 100, Okay, so 0 0.9. Right, so then we take the tan inverse, tan and tan inverse means tan negative 1 of 0 0.9. That's what we're going to do. That's going to spin. 
the negative exponent means inverse. Okay, and that's, we're going to find theta. Tan inverse of 0 0.9. And so theta is going to equal, I don't know, let me type that in. I have the answer, actually. 41.99. Degrees or 42, you can call it. Okay, so now we know. Now we know. This is what I was saying, Elizabeth. It wasn't exactly 45. It was probably pretty close. Like we know it's in the northwest direction somewhere. It's in that quadrant, right? We just need to nail down exactly where, right? And that's what the that's what this does. Okay. Um. So then we can actually write out what the displacement vector is, right? Remember a, a vector, a vector is comprised of a magnitude and direction, right? And so that's what this is doing. We have one part here left, right? We know the displacement, like the magnitude, that's this piece here, how big the vector is, right? We know it is 134.5 kilometers. Now, what I'm about to write is probably not going to fit inside this little bracket. So I'm going to, uh, let me space this out here. Okay, this is where you're just going to write. This is maybe my bad. Actually, some of it's my bad. Sometimes, like, I, I maybe didn't make this big enough on my iPad. So what I'll do here is, I'll, I'll, beside here, I'll just write this vector. Okay, so delta D. I'm going to open a square bracket, okay, and then you guys need to decide, okay, here, how am I going to write this direction, okay? Here's how I, this is how I like it, like writing it. So Jane initially traveled in the west direction. So she initially traveled in the west direction, and then she traveled north. So she went, well, how far north? 42 degrees north. Because that angle there is 42 degrees. Come on. It's not cooperating. From here to here is 42 degrees. So she went west 42 degrees north. That's how you read that. She was traveling west and then went north. It's 42 degrees north. Right? Did we have any problems? That's the vector. This is your answer. Okay, I just wasn't able to fit it in the little spot that I had. Okay, that's that's the vector for displacement. Now, it was also asking for one more thing. The velocity. I didn't want to find the velocity of what's going on here. So you say, okay, well, how long did that take? Right. Well, it took two hours. Okay, so let, let's just do the calculation then. Velocity is the vector version of speed, but I know the displacement value. It's 134.5. So the velocity is going to be the change in, dis, in, in the, or the displacement divided by the time. Okay, so I get 134.5 divided by 2. Right? That's going to equal, whatever it equals, uh, 67.3 kilometers per hour. What's the vector look like? That's just the magnitude. That's the, the magnitude of the velocity. Right? I need the, the entire vector. What does the vector look like? Okay, well, the velocity vector is going to be 67.3 kilometers per hour west 42 degrees I'm gonna move this over so what I like about the iPad I have the ability to do this I don't have to squeeze things in oh this sometimes does some funny things 
west 42 degrees north. There are your two answers. Okay, so you can see that velocity and displacement are much more informative about an object's motion relative to just like it just provides more information like I have a better image in my head as to where Jane ended up right as opposed to saying oh Jane drove 190 kilometers in two hours that tells me nothing about where Jane is if I wanted to find where Jane was that's useless she could literally go in any direction 190 kilometers right whereas this way I know exactly where Jane went and how far from me Jane is, right? Her displacement was 134 and a half kilometers west 42 degrees north. So I know which direction to look in, right? Because that's what displacement does for me. It tells me exactly how far she is from me and the direction that she is from me. And then additionally, I can find out, okay, well, how fast did she get there, All right? Or what was her speed along the way? Or, sorry, velocity. What's her velocity? Okay. The velocity has to follow the, 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 the angle at which she, her displacement does. Okay. The two are tied. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? I think I put two questions there for you. Okay. And I, I, I thought maybe I had, I'm going to stop it there.